I had a request a few weeks ago for help getting new weapon sounds working in a Fallout 2 mod. Well, I worked on it during my Saturday stream, and here's what I came up with. <laughs> First of all, there are a few things we need to have prepared for this. Download a copy of Sound 2 ACM and Reg Sound from Dubrovnik's archive, links will be in the description. You'll need an audio editor to export the sounds as WAV files. I recommend Audacity or FFmpeg since both are free and open source. Then you'll need a copy of soundless.lst in the SFX directory, and you'll need the Fallout 2 Dat Explorer, Mapper, and Proto Manager. I have a video up on how to find and install them if you don't have them already. This video will continue assuming that you've already watched that video and installed them. Open your copy of Dat Explorer. I'm using this new release by Mr. Stalin, aka Fakelsub, which allows you to drag and drop your Dat files onto the left interface pane to open them. Looks nicer too. Okay, open master.dat and browse to sound slash sfx and find sndlist.lst, or you can just type its name in to go straight to it. Right click the file and choose extract selected files to and point it to your Fallout 2 slash data directory like we do for pretty much every other mod file we extract from here. This should create the folder data slash sound slash sfx if it wasn't there already, as well as making a copy of soundlist.lst. Okay, I'm going to grab myself a sound effect from YouTube and download it. If you've got a favorite site of your own or a CD or something licensed, just download or rip that as you see fit. If you are ripping or converting though, the next step is to convert the original audio clip to the WAV format, so make sure to rip to WAV format first. Now for those of you with a file format that's not already a WAV file, if it's already an audio file, I recommend Audacity if you don't want to use FFmpeg and want a simple GUI to import a sound file, edit it, and export it to WAV format, but most sound editors will probably work. Here are the important settings for converting to WAV format. While Fallout and Fallout 2 seem to support playing up to 44.1 kHz sound files, they only do so at 11.025 kHz. And on a related note, for some reason all the Fallout 2 sound files are 22.05 kHz ACM files, but recorded at 2 times speed. You could do that if you want, but I like to just change the project rate in Hz to 11,025 Hz and export that way. This allows me to play the sound at normal speed both in and out of game. In Audacity, once you've imported and cut down your sound file and set the project rate to 11,025 Hz, go to File, Export, and choose Export as WAV. Pick the name you see fit and then just click Save. You can just click OK here unless you want to add some metadata. Now for those files that are not simple audio formats, you can either open them in a video editor and export them as sound files, or you can use FFmpeg. If you want to use FFmpeg, here's a simple script you can use to convert the format over. Best thing about it, you can just drop this script in the form of a batch file into a folder full of sound files, video files, whatever FFmpeg will recognize, and when you run it, all media files in the folder with it will automatically be converted to WAV format at the same time. It'll ask you for the file extension type first, but you can just put an asterisk in here to tell it to work on all files. In fact, we even converted our WAV file to a WAV file. Now that we've got that taken care of, the next step is to extract the sound to acm executable we downloaded earlier into the same folder as your audio files. At this point, you can either open the DOS prompt by typing cmd in the start bar, browse the folder you have your sound files stored, and run the command sndtoacm sfx.wav sfx.acm, where you replace sfx with the name of your file, or you can run this other batch file script I created which does all of that to each WAV file in the same folder. Either way, once that's done, copy both regsound.exe and your newly converted ACM file over to your Fallout 2 mod under Fallout 2 slash data slash sound slash sfx, the same place we extracted the soundless.lst file to. Before we move on to actually integrating your new sounds into the game, we need to take a look at how to name your ACM files so the game will read them correctly. If you're making a sound that you're going to refer to from a script, then you can name your files just about anything you want. File names longer than 8 characters appear to work fine in-game, but not so much the mapper. Instead, the mapper crashes. So bear that in mind when naming them. Just don't use spaces, spaces will cause it to be ignored. But if you want to make sounds to be used for weapons, or want to attach them in the Proto Manager somehow, then you'll have to use a specific naming convention. There are four sounds for attack types, two for single fire and two for burst mode, and two more sounds for reload, for a grand total of six sounds. Each has to follow a very specific naming pattern. The first two letters can be either WA for weapon attack, or WR for weapon reload. Nothing else will work. The third letter is the only character you can change in this name, and is used as the sound ID in the game. If you open the Proto Manager and look at a weapon, 
you'll see a sound ID box on both the weapon and common tabs. If you open the sound ID dropdown, you'll notice a column of numbers on the left with numbers, letters, and toward the bottom, a few symbols in a column to their right. This column on the right are the ASCII characters already identified as sound IDs by the game files. The column on the left are the decimal codes for the ASCII characters on the right. We'll come back to that in a minute. For now, just know that all the letters and numbers are already used, and so are several of the symbols. And any character you choose must also be allowed by the operating system in file names, so slashes are out. For this example, I'll use the next symbol down the row of number keys that hasn't been used yet, the percent symbol. The fourth character immediately after the sound ID is either a one or a two, where a one is a single fire and two is for burst. The next three letters are X's, no clue why, but if you try to change them, then your sound just won't work. And the final character is also either a one or a two, where for each sound type, single fire, burst, or reload, there are two different variations numbered one and two. To sum it all up, you have six file names you're allowed to use, of which you can only change one specific character in the name to identify which group of sound effects they are. And that sound ID has to be translated to a decimal code before being used in the Proto Manager. Basically just name them like this, but change the third symbol to something unique for your sound effect. That's, those are your only options. Double check to make sure that your sound files are in the same folder as soundlist.lst, then run regsound.exe. This will add your sound effects to soundlist.lst, reordering the entire list in alphabetical order based on the file name of your sound effect. Just remember to take out the spaces in your name before you do this, otherwise the next time you run it, it will actually crash and hang here. To be fair, the game will also ignore your sound file, so make sure to remove your spaces when you name your files. Thankfully, it makes a backup, so you can just rename it to .lst and, and run it again. Once this is done, you can open the Proto Manager if you want to attach your sounds to a specific item like a weapon, or you can add them in a script. To add your sound effects to a weapon, either make a new one or open the weapon you want to add sound effects to. Make sure you're on the Weapon tab and highlight the number in the Sound ID box. If you press the Play button here, you'll hear the sound effects for each sound ID. You can browse the drop-down list if you want to check out the other in-game sound ID groups. Sadly, the Proto Manager doesn't immediately recognize any new characters you've added for the sound ID. To add a new sound ID group, such as what we just made for our weapon sounds, we need to manually input the sound ID we created earlier. But we can't just type the actual character we're using, which is the percent sign here. We have to type the decimal code representing our ASCII character instead. Here, we'll need a chart of ASCII codes, and Mr. Stalin once again was awesome enough to provide a link to one. The symbol we used earlier in our file name was a percent symbol, and its decimal code is 37. So we type 37 into the sound ID box. You can test out your sounds with the play button if you want. At a minimum, you'll need to set the primary attack range to be greater than zero if you want to just test your sound. But don't forget to name it. And finally, if you want to add a sound effect to a script, just use the command play SFX with the name of the sound in quotes. Remember, no spaces allowed. And don't forget to close each command with a semicolon. And if you want to use your script on an item, make sure to click the list button at the top and register it in both scripts.lst and scripts.h. Then click compile and open the mapper. In the mapper, select the item you want to attach it to, go down to the bottom and click the edit button, then the new script button, and select your new script. You can use the letter keys as shortcuts and page up page down work along with the arrow keys. Fair warning though, if the sound is over 8 characters, it seems to play fine in the game, but will crash the mapper. So be careful with that and choose wisely. To test out a weapon sound in game or in the mapper, Open the item list and press the N key to get to the end of the list where your new weapon is and drop it on the map near the player character spawn point. Save the map, press F8 to enter game mode, pick it up, and test it out. And do the same in-game if you feel like it. <laughs> One final note, if you just name your new sound files to overwrite the existing game files, you'll still need to run regsound.exe to properly register them in soundlist.lst. The reason for this is because soundlist.lst also tracks the block size of the ACM file, its real size, and its number on the list. If you want more details, check the link to the wiki that I left in the description. And that's all I've got for this video. Hope it helps out you guys and gals who want to make new audio artwork for your mods. 
My next modding video release will be about creating new critters from scratch in Blender. Until then, I can't wait to see what awesome mods you guys come up with.